Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. An approach for mixing and placing a periodontal dressing will be demonstrated. Like any other dental procedure, it's beneficial to have a systematic approach when placing the dressing to minimize time consumed and to increase the quality of the service rendered. On the bracket table are the instruments that are used during the placement of the dressing. There are some gauze sponges, a mirror, plastic instrument, cotton pliers, and if you'll notice there's a little pile of powder and that will come in very handy for us later on. On top of the dental unit is the Ward Wonder Pack powder and liquid, the mixing spatula, and the tablet for mixing the material. In the mouth, we're going to be placing a dressing in the upper left quadrant. It'll be around the maxillary left molars and the second bicuspid. When placing a dressing, it's always advisable not to use more material than necessary, so the area is examined to determine how much will be necessary. So Darlene is told to mix 10 drops of material, so she'll place the powder on the mixing pad You make a little hole in the center of this pile of powder so it looks like a little crater. Notice how she also places a portion of the powder off to the side. Go ahead and put the liquid in there. And that's reserved. She'll place 10 drops now in the center of the pile of powder in the mixing center of the mixing pad. Dressing material of this type is mixed rapidly and the powder is incorporated rapidly into the liquid. A very critical factor in making the dressing material manageable as far as intraoral placement is to make sure that it is good and thick. You can notice how she continues to incorporate more powder into this dressing and since she's done this thousands of times before she has a good idea of how rapidly the powder will go in there and she knows the consistency that is necessary to make it manageable. Notice how she pushed the excess powder out and away from the mixing area on the pad and she just brings in more powder as is needed. When initially using a dressing material like Ward Wonder Pack, one of the big problems is placing it interorally and pressing it around the teeth and in between the teeth and next to the gingival tissues that when you pull your finger away, it will stick to your finger rather than stay in the patient's mouth. And this is where having that dressing material very thick is important. And the next most important item is to have it well rolled out in a lot of powder incorporated in the surface. Now notice how Darlene balled that up and is now rolling it out with her fingers. She'll roll it into a rope approximately one quarter the size of a pencil. But notice how she continues to roll it in the powder and roll it out uniformly. Now this dressing material will be cut in the middle and half of it given to me at a time. But notice again she's putting more powder in there and just before she's ready to bring it off that pad to me she'll drop it so the excess powder comes off and then it'll be given to me for immediate placement in the mouth. Again, notice the size of that dressing material. Now I'll retract the cheek and just simply lay the dressing material in the area that I want to place it. Now I'll get my fingers back out of there so you can see how the dressing is sitting in there in the vicinity of the surgerized area at the margin between the tooth and the crown. Now one finger will be used to press this material in between the teeth and the finger pressure is basically straight in so that you actually press some of the material interproximally. 
Now see how that is adhering? And notice when I take my finger away, the dressing stays there, and that's because of the powder. And also the fact that I'm wearing rubber gloves is beneficial. So it, it's, it adheres less to rubber glove than it does to your finger. And I went around the distal of the second molar, and you can even get a little saliva on your rubber glove to make it even less apt to adhere to your finger. Now notice how smooth that is and how rather thin, but it covers both the tooth and gingival tissue. And it is also possible to take the cheek and on the external surface rub the cheek to make that dressing even more smooth because the mucosa pressed against it with a saliva on there will make the surface of the dressing material quite smooth. Darlene gives me the cotton pliers, and these cotton pliers in a closed position will be used to press the dressing material interproximally. Now notice how this is being pressed interproximally. Now I'm doing this initially from a coronal position. We don't need to have dressing material on the first bicuspid and up to the cuspid as we have, so that'll be removed. And notice how sponge is right there to pick up the excess. Now I'll go between the molars and again press the dressing material and approximately. I'll also now take this cotton plier and come from the gingival margin to press it in approximately. And this provides the mechanical lock to keep the dressing in place. And again, go back to the molar area to press it in approximately. Now Darlene will roll that second piece of dressing material in the powder so it has powder incorporated in it just before handing to me again. Now notice how white that is with powder. It's just loaded. Now the dressing material is carried into the mouth with the fingers. And you won't be able to see too well here, but it's the same on the lingual as it was on the buckle. One of the fingers is used to press that in approximately and to thin it out so it isn't too bulky to the tongue. There's some excess material back here, so that will be removed with the tweezers by merely squeezing the dressing and then taking it away slowly. If you don't watch it when you squeeze that dressing, you're apt to have the dressing stick to the tweezers or come along with you. Now notice I just put my finger down here in the mouth to get some saliva on it before going on the distal side of the second molar to press the buccal and lingual portions of dressing against the distal of the tooth to make the dressing conform to the anatomy as much as possible so it's minimally bulky to the patient, which means the patient is less apt then to play with it. Now again, on the inside, I'm doing the same thing I did in the buckle. I'm using these cotton pliers in a closed position to press the dressing material in approximately, and I'm pressing it through far enough that it will actually touch the dressing that was pressed in from the buckle. Notice how I'm using a finger on the buckle surface in the same interproximal spot that I'm working on the lingual so that when this dressing is being shoved in approximately, I'm not then also shoving the dressing out of the buckle, so dislodging the buckle side, but I'm maintaining the mechanical lock in approximately in the buckle at the same time that I am acquiring a mechanical lock by pressing the dressing material in approximately from the lingual. Now I'm going to smooth this over a little bit more with my finger after just pressing that in approximately. Again, making that as minimally bulky as possible and Darlene has a plastic instrument available, and I'll trim away excess dressing material. From the lingual, you probably can't see that too well, but in the buckle, you'll be able to see it better. Around the distal, I want to make sure that there's no dressing that's going to interfere, interfere with the occlusion during function. And you'll notice at times I'll go back in with my finger to again smooth it over and press that dressing in place. Now turn your head, Marion, to the right. Now on the buckle, I want to trim off the excess dressing material. I'm just apical to the infrabulge area on the tooth, the height of contour on the tooth. And this makes the appearance a little nicer for the patient not to have the crowns completely covered up also makes it a little nicer as far as comfort is concerned. And if a patient does chew on this side to some extent, 
there is less potential for the being for the dressing being dislodged if that margin of the coronal portion of the dressing is located apical to the height of contour of the tooth. Now I'll again go in the mouth with my fingers and press this from both the buckle and angle at the same time to do a final smoothening of the dressing material to make sure it's acceptable. The dressing is always checked to see if the margins infringe on any muscle movement, any movement of the soft tissues. I'll again check the lingual. I don't want it extending too far on the palate because again that would be something that the tongue might unnecessarily play with. Bite down now, Marion. Let's go chop, chop, chop. That's it. Let's check the occlusion to make sure and I could see ahead of time that there was no dressing material on the coronal portions of these teeth so that that should now function well. And the patient is instructed that they can very gently brush the occlusal surfaces of the teeth where the dressing is located, but it's preferable not to dress, brush the dressing itself. And the rest of the mouth the patient can brush as they were normally taught. Also, the patient should take it easy to make sure that they don't unnecessarily disturb this area with food. So they should eat a soft diet. And the patient is given an instruction sheet to have written information that they can read when they get home to ensure that they'll have minimal potential for problems after leaving the office. The assistant always cleans the mouth off after a dressing like this has been placed to make sure there's no powder or any other debris left for a patient comfort and appearance. Thus, this completes the demonstration of the mixing and placing of a periodontal dressing. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.